sitting here in Mac Fitness with Tony McAlevey. The boss man is over there. Thank you for letting us use the facility. Lally, with the camera set up as always. Wapa, making it feel like we're on casting couch. <laughs> 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 and with that, I'm not going to go and do the usual thing people do in podcasts. They're just like, oh, tell us a wee bit about yourself. I hate that because you're like, I don't know. Anything. Joe, like, you're like, how do you, how do you actually describe who you are? Because uh, you're like, I still don't know. Who I, you're like, I'm trying to figure it out. So like, uh, depends on the day. And people always turn around and just go, I'm a, and they just name their job. But people are so much more. Do you know what I mean? Like you're so much more than a coach or whatever. So it's nice to just go like, right, let's just roll. Mm, if you want to fucking find out who he is, go and follow him on Instagram. Yeah. And look at all this stuff. Listen to his own podcast. The Muscle and the Hustle, which is literally no muscle and no hustle. It's just us bad mouthing each other and other people practically. So. <laughs> <laughs> is that a favorite pastime of yours, bad mouthing others? Do you know what it is? We just, we, just go, we just go on rambles and then we go down rabbit holes. But it's more so like, you know, we'll talk about, like, we'll be able to talk about Trump one week. The next week we'll be talking about porn. The next week we'll be talking about fitness. And it's just like, we're just having the crack the whole time. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. It's just, we're not afraid. It, it's like the way you are. You're not afraid. I'm not afraid to say something. And mm. I'm not afraid to say about somebody. If, if somebody's doing my tits and I'll say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're better off. Call them out. Yeah, you mentioned porn there. I actually seen something on Instagram, right? <laughs> Somebody put up a post and he was like, uh, something I was addicted to porn from when I was 14 to 25 and he was basically saying everybody should give up porn. <laughs> it was probably me, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I don't think it was. <laughs> we don't want to know. I was looking at it like, but the porn thing's actually really interesting. Like, see, whenever, because I was like, oh, it was one of our first podcasts and I was like, I'll do research. I'll, oh. I'll research it and see. And it was like, Porn is a two point seven billion dollar industry, and I was like, "You don't hear much. You don't hear much about that for learning life and work at school." Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But like, it's even just the fact of like how much people do be watching that and all. It was actually when we talked about it, I was like, "Oh, do you know, Mickey, how much do you watch?" And we were dead honest about it, and we were like, "Probably most days." And I was like, "That is a slight addiction to an mm, extent." 100%. But like, I only think an addiction is a bad thing if it's actually causing issues somewhere. It's taken away from something other else in your life. Yeah, I'm but laughing. If it's taken away from, <laughs> if it's taken away from how you're performing in the bedroom with your uh, with the other half, then is it an issue? Yeah, like, I, I can't believe that we're <laughs> what, two minutes this. in, two minutes in, and we're already talking about porn. So welcome to the Higher Training Podcast. <laughs> no holes barred, but. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna skip past porn maybe unless you want unless you have something important <laughs> to talk good. about. My mum my mum wa watches them, so she's probably like, "What's that noise upstairs?" So so <laughs> cut <laughs> cut from there. Is that where the forearms came from? <laughs> There's no four. There, there, that's definitely not where they're coming from. Because I do too much for that. But right, let's cut. What do you, what do you want to die? And then we'll go from there. <laughs> so one of the main things I mentioned, uh, I messaged you about pod, doing a podcast originally was values. Yes. And I liked the, the big piece you did on values in your story that time. Is that something you've sat down and yeah, thought like, about deeply? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, I went to a course before, and it was a, it was by Dee Martini. It's like a human behavior specialist, and, like, it was a pretty penny to go to. And he just said, like, everything should be based around your values. And then, because I was struggling to be, like, not happy, but I was sort of struggling. Like, do you know the way you go through that, like, crisis every so often when you're lying in bed, and you're like, is my life going the right direction? Is this right? Is this right? And you're sort of questioning everything, and you're, it's like 12 o'clock at night, and you're trying to sleep, and you're like, why is this happening now? And so I was like, I wonder, will I go, will I go to somebody who's a wee bit more tuned in? We went to him. And even just the values thing, it was like, right, write down what really will actually fulfill your life. And like, I'm just sitting that ball there in case it's in the way. And uh, practically, like, fulfill your life in, in a certain way. And practically, whenever I put it down, I was sort of like, what actually really does matter in like 10, 15, 20 years? Not like how many followers you have or you know, money now. I was like, what's actually going to, what, what, whatever, in 20 years, am I going to look back and be like, do I regret that? Because I think that's the scariest thing is like looking back and being like, oh, I fucked it because you don't get another go. Mm -hmm. uh, so like my main values, there's a couple, but the main ones I sort of roll with are always impact, freedom, and family. They're sort of the three that I base everything around. So if, if a decision that I'm going to make can help them, I'll usually do it. So like, say for example, like this is the reason why I really struggled with not going on nights out for a long time period because like all my mates were doing it and sort of that no fear of missing out. And then I was always like, but my values aren't that. My values are impacting people's lives, 
getting more freedom for myself. So like, you know, I can go traveling, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. That's really that sort of like idea. And the last one is how, like, can I actually spend more time and actually like help my family and like spend time with people that matter. I count family also as like close friends, you know, like people that actually, you would go, I count them or they really, like if, if something happened, you'd be really devastated. That's sort of what, I, like, so what, like a circle really is probably a better way. And then after that, I was like, do you know what? Everything else doesn't really matter that much. So like, I think it also settles me, even if that makes sense. Mm. Would you be big into that? Yeah. I would, but I've been, uh, I've been sitting and thinking about my values as of late. And I know there's a few of them that are like kind of floating in and out, but I try to stick to stick to three-ish and impact would have been one, one of yeah. mine as well. I think it's just the same with anybody who walks in fucking any industry you're trying to help people you want to be able to impact off. Yeah, nice. you want to make but a difference. You would expect most people who would be in that business that would have yeah. <laughs> yeah, impact as the values, but not all the time. But uh, integrity would be a big thing for me. I like doing what I say I'm going to do. Yes, you know? a man of your a man of wor- your word, like sticking to what you say, uh, even after the feeling's gone. Exactly. And one thing I kind of, somebody, I did, did a few different ways to try and find the values. And one of them was like kind of reverse engineer things that really, really, really piss you off, right? And when people don't, don't, uh, don't keep up with the word, it annoys you. It annoys me to that level, and I'm like, it actually pushes me to want to be hold hold myself to my own word a wee bit better as well. Yeah, I was like, I'm sitting and pondering that one for a while because it wouldn't have been up at the top of the list, and it would have. I think a lot of people would struggle maybe sometimes keeping yeah they do the yeah 100 percent. they'll make excuses themselves do you know what's a really good one if anybody's watching uh, that boy i i went to the course i think it's d martini if you just type in d martini value finder picker it gives you like lists mm. and then there'll be words in there you'll be like no 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 and then you'll be like yes maybe and you can almost start like he'll have like a hundred in the list or 50 and you can all he's like he's done it for a lifetime and he makes people pick them in the room yeah it's not like you're picking your Power Ranger color with a case of, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like a, it's that sort of thing where it almost gives you ideas because you're like, do you know what? That actually, because for some people, their friends can matter more than their family yeah. or do you know what I mean? If you're, or your career or your ambition, there can be other things like you're saying, like I would never have th- thought of integrity, even though that's something that does matter. But a case of, everybody will be slightly different and there'll be ones that you just click with and you can even narrow it down to five or ten then over time more and more goes because i usually have like i have five main ones i always say i'm three the other ones are like time mm. and stuff because you you only get so much time so i really value it because it fascinates the fucker to me like it's one of the things where like it goes so quick and yet you trade your you trade your life for money you trade mm. your time for money do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's literally what life is about for most people 100%. for 40 hours a week. So it's just something where I'm always like, technically people are buying your time. Mm. So like, how can you buy your time back? It's just something that I, I, I dive into quite a lot, but it's one of them things where I think the values thing is just something that, uh, it's a reason why I think a lot of people are sort of just plodding along 100%. And, and don't realize that like, maybe you are really happy, but you're questioning yourself. But if you're doing everything that follows your values, you'll go, do you know what? This is right. I'm just wondering whereas it, then you could look at your values and be like do you know what nothing i'm doing like if you're working 90 hours a week and your highest value is family and you hate your job then what are you what is going on maybe yes you can support them by that mm. but at the same time that makes sense then work that but at the same time if you're actually working 90 hours a week you hate your job you're earning per money why don't you just spend more time with your family and work less do you know, it's 100%. that do you know what i mean it's that yeah. sort of like it makes you just sort of be self-aware is probably the best way to explain it guides decisions like i i find the help it's helpful but more with bigger decisions a hundred percent like small decisions the mental we make in the day it's very hard for values to guide all of them you can guide a lot of them yeah but big decisions you have more time to ponder and be like right is it fitting in what i'm trying to do is my relationship right is this person somebody i want to be with is this career right for me is should i buy this car mm. joe decisions where it's like a weak commitment yeah I think, yeah, no, I agree. It's something that I just don't think, like, it's it can go in one ear and out the other very quickly. Whereas, yeah. I think when you start out, I, I always write everything down, like, put it on pen and paper, and then it's out. Mm. And it just makes everything so much clearer, because when everything's up here, it's so jumbled. Oh, yeah. It's like a, I had a client, and I'll dive in it, and it's like a case of, like, she was really struggling with, like, relationship issues. And I was like, there's literally going to be two options here. And you're ever going to marry the person you're going to break up. There's no in-between. Mm. That's literally the way a relationship goes. So I was like, if there's not even a small chance you're going to marry the person, you're just causing yourself pain for no real reason. Like, it does, it actually, there is only, but whenever you go into a relationship, you don't be thinking immediately, oh, I'm going to marry this person. But that is the only option. That's the only route that's going. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's that sort of thing of, 
like otherwise you're just wasting your you're causing yourself pain but whenever you actually value your time you'll think about stuff like that way a bit more mm. do you know what I mean it's important thing valuing your time as well though especially in in in, in the game that you're, you're in which is online online coaching yeah and especially seeing as freedom is a big thing that you, you want to have as well uh you can freedom to do the shit you want to do and freedom to be able to spend time with your family and all that jazz. Yeah. Uh, was it hard being able to say no to things at the start or maybe say no to more business and, and that? I'm still quite poor with like saying, like I, I limit it, but it's a case of like, I'm good at saying no to doing things I don't want to do. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, like I actually, like that was a New Year's resolution I made like two or three years ago. I was like, I'm just going to say no if I don't want to do it. Like, so like I would just be like, it started off with like I was gonna, I said no to drugs like and I was just like every time and the more see the more somebody tells me to do something or the more the more I'm like no you're actually annoying me and all. it's like do you want somebody's like right come on come on come on you're like mm. I've already said no you're just actually and I just be like you're actually annoying me now and if I cave I feel like a dickhead yeah uh, so yeah I think that whole like the freedom thing and the, the time thing and because the clients and because I'm even getting into property and other things now it's that sort of thing of where I'm like I value it so much if somebody's gonna waste it. Like it shows that even people that waste their own time, I'm like, it shows you. Like I literally went from like two thousand fo- like following down to zero on Instagram. And it wasn't because it was a personal tag on me. It was because I was like, I need to get time back, and I'm literally mm. scrolling for like forty five to an hour a day. And I was like, 100%. I could spend that having a conversation, a cup of tea with my mom, and actually value that time, making a memory. Whereas in in twenty years, I'm not gonna look back and go. Do you remember that Instagram story I saw? Not a bit. Do you know what I mean? I don't even remember what you looked at on Instagram the day before yesterday. Like not a clue. No. Not a clue. So I didn't even know this because I unfollowed I unfollowed everybody. And now it says I didn't even know this. And it seems when I click on, all it shows me is a circle and it says you've caught up to date with everything for three days on a tick. That's and right. I was like, I've never seen this. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's the amount of times I click in and see it, and I'm like, what am I doing? I've not even on Instagram anymore. Mm. But it's habit. Yeah. 100 percent You're saving yourself a lot of a lot of time. Not w- I don't like saying time's wasted, but it is probably not it spent is, too though, fucking wisely. Too well. Yeah. Like yeah. say you see if an hour day. Mm. eight hours a week like you know, sorry seven hours seven. <laughs> <laughs> is there a fucking eight day week out in my bed is it, it feels like eight days <laughs> I mean, I tell you that. It's, it's like half nine at night so like i usually am in the cot or eating at this stage so cut them out of break edit, <laughs> edit. <laughs> it'd be a bed at 10 o'clock most nights would you no like i, I tend to try to but because i'm eating so late now i would be probably like more i'm more like i get to bed at 11 up at seven Mm. I do get eight hours every night, and then there'll be nights where it's twelve and eight. There'll be nights where it's one and nine, mm. but I always stick to like sort of in around that eight hours, and it'll be like ten to six. That sort of in the, around that range. Like I'm not religiously in bed at half nine, like I learn take every night. Mm-hmm. But that uh, having to get that many meals in in a day. So you're you said it, is it eight? I'm up to eight now. I was on six for a long time, and we were dieting for a bit, and now because I'm on the push back up, it's like sort of it is going to start getting a bit taxing time wise because you're probably eating like you get up at eight say you wake up at eight eight ten twelve two four six eight ten do you know what i mean mm. and that's you that's you eating every two hours like that's not handy like how's the belly feeling after all that all right like i do i have a stomach of lead like i do <laughs> like, like i could eat anything and it won't affect me in the slightest i'd say whenever you're a man for the drinking that you could put away some of it then i used to see now oh. i'm the sort of person like i have two yeah. drinks and all of a sudden i'm like Oh, I'm loaded. Do you know, like, I'm like, I better act like I'm not. Do you know, like, it, it hits me so quick, and I'm like, I'm like a hundred kilo dude. Like, I'm like, yeah, had one glass of wine. Bit. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm like, because we, we would go out for dinner with the family. I'd be like, oh, I'll get a glass of wine. And then I'm like, oh, I can't drink. <laughs> do you know what I mean? yeah. uh, so, no, like, the drinking thing, don't get me wrong. If I'm going at it, I'll go. But I, I'm not into like just a weekend celebration every week. Mm. Like, there's no point like celebrating a Saturday. Waking up hungover on a Sunday and going, oh, I can't, I don't want to cope with Monday. It's not for me. Like, it's right. just. Especially if it takes away from other stuff you want to do. Yeah, 100%. Like, I, I see if I go on like a mad one and maybe on a Saturday night that affects me into a Monday or Tuesday, I'm just like, that's the worst of my. I'm not, that, not that I've wasted Monday and Tuesday, but it's a. I'm like that though. I get angry at myself. I'm like, oh, I wasted Sunday. Yeah. And then you're like, but I was probably not going to do anything anyway. <laughs> but I'm annoyed at myself. Yeah, 100%. But like that. Even you mightn't have done it, but it would have been better for you than lying around hungover. I'm just there, fuck, oh, fuck, what the fuck was he at last night? Yeah, 100%. Fucking Egypt. Uh, but uh, with, with what you're trying to do, you're obviously trying to put on a good bit of mass. Yeah, like I, I went from, I've been, like I started lifting, I was like 58 kilos or something. And then I was... 58 kilos when you started? Uh, yeah, when I was 18. I was 58 or 57. I was only like nine stone something. Like I was, I was because I'm not tall... I was like a whippet, so I was tiny, like, and I went for that stage of you knowing sc- school where 
I was really skinny one year and the next year I had tits. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, how does this even work? So I went back to really skinny and then I've slowly built up. Like it's taken a lifetime, but mm. the, this coach that I'm on with as well, he's like me, he's a bit of a pusher. Like, so like we went from 77 or 77 kilos to about 102 there. So it was about 25, so it was about four stones. So it's a lot of weight, like, but mm. it's just one of them things where I wanted the muscle. So I, there's no point in complaining about it. Like no. I just, just get stuck in. See how it goes. And if I don't want the muscle, then that's fine. Don't do it. But I do want the muscle, so I have to do it. Do you know what I mean? What's the end goal? See, for me, it's one of them things where I think down the line, I might go towards like a show or something, but I'm not this sort of person that's going to be dieting every month. Like, do you know these people that diet every year for a show? Fuck yeah. that. I, yeah. My life is not going to be a load of plastic trophies sitting in my living room whenever mm. I was 20 and a neck, good neck. <laughs> yeah. That's not what I want. Maybe like a one-off and go done well, having off a move, but it's more for me. Like, I just fucking love it. I yeah. just love, it's like, why you get into training? Because you get addicted. Yeah, yeah. I look Like, the pump's so, so addictive, I think. Like, mm. You know what I mean? Like, when you see yourself, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like coming. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, cut that. <laughs> There's enough talking about coming and porn already. <laughs> We're not diving into it anymore. Oh, it's, yeah, but yeah. It's like a blue movie. Uh, I kind of lost the love for it the pump i think for a good while you I'd, do when you're coaching though i think mm, i think it's been in the gym way too much and maybe me not trying to train in other places now not with here because i only do i'm mostly online and i do two days in here yeah so i i've been loving training in here and when you have a lovely facility like this and i know the machines there's no machines here for you yeah but, i'm a machine junkie like. <laughs> but i i like training here that's why i started doing brazilian jiu-jitsu just to have something that's not gym based to kind of take me mind. But I bet that's great. I love it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Takes me mind away from it. And strange enough, it gives me a bit of, I don't know, I feel calmer after. Yeah, all the aggression's gone. Mm. And you probably are far clearer thinking. And if you say you had an argument with somebody afterwards, you go to that, like, it's you're far more mellow. 100%. Yeah, it's the reason I go to the cold water too. Like, it clears me out. It just sort of, that sounds like I'm going to the, I'm going there and just <laughs> clear myself out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it does, it just, it, it's a release. Whereas mm. I think, a, like, if you don't have that, that's when, like, frustration builds and you're not, you're not going to make the right decision for yourself. Mm, 100%. Joe, like, my mum for a long time would have been the sort of person who would have done everything for everybody else and nothing for herself. Not even take, like, 10 minutes to have a cup of tea and relax or go for a walk. Or, and then I think that's why, like, she's burned out, like, multiple times. And it's not even, don't get me wrong, she's doing loads for everybody, but at the same time, it's just because instead of doing that extra hour, she's like, not not wasting it. She's just not spending it wisely where she could recharge, go for a walk, whatever she needs to clear her head. And mm. I think loads of people will be guilty of that, where they spend it on somebody else. Whereas like, you can't give to anybody unless you're burnt out, or sorry, unless you charge yourself up. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. that sort of thing. Like, sometimes the best thing you can do is take an hour away from everybody because when you come back, you're actually of use. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And even with business wise, like, you know, a lot of people when they get into any business, especially online business when you can work nonstop. Because oh, there's mental. always people in somewhere in the world that's up. Oh, it's wild. Like you can work nonstop, but you'll burn out that way if you're nonstop. Yeah, like 24 that. hours on social media or yeah. sending emails. That one hour that you take away to yourself is going to only, only help you with your business. Yeah, do you know what a prime example is? I got a uh, word to read this. It was like a, you can't, uh, you can't read the label of the bottle when you're inside it. And like, that always sticks to me. Like you can't see how your business or how you're doing when you're actually in the middle of running things. Like you only get like a, like whenever somebody asks you, right, uh, write down what's went well over the last three months or like what's not went well, you can actually go, well, fuck my relationship's actually pretty shit at the minute. And like, you might not even realize that or my career is going per or this is going really well, but you don't realize whenever you're in, mm. it's like taking a bird's eye view. And I think that like the reading the label thing actually really sticks with me all the time. Cause I'm always like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's just always sort of, but it does, it's that sort of weird. It's just a weird thing that always sort of, you need to sort of be self-aware, I think to an extent. Mm, I find I used to be all right at studying, but see once I left college, it's fine. It's so hard to fucking study. Like it's, I have to be really into something to study and like, yeah, to, you have to like to, it. I have to really like it to, to get into it. Um, and I found that, uh, some of my clients that would be in college and that they would be like, I can't fucking study. I yeah. just can't get into it. And I'd be like, take an hour away. You've been sitting there five hours. Yeah. No wonder you, you're staring at a screen for five hours, flicking between Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, quality or quantity. Take an hour away, go back at it. Yeah. Even if you get half an hour of quality work. 
Yeah, hundred percent better than like I, I'm always about quality over quantity. Yeah, I will work all day and all night, but at the same time, there's a certain stage where you're like I'm literally doing deadly here. I'm just yeah. sitting here to be to say I'm actually here. Mm. It's like people that are working somewhere and they're just like, oh, I'm just clocking an hour. I'm just clocking my hours here as quick as I can. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Like. The online world's mad though, isn't it? Like the it's one of them things that like snowballs very quickly and all too. Like it's it, it's because it's anybody and everywhere, and it's <laughs> just so so different. Because like. I'm sure you didn't play, like in school. I didn't turn around and go, "I want to be an online coach." Did he fuck? I didn't know what the fuck it was. There so was no I, online coaches back whenever I was in school that I know. Of. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like I was doing. I'm doing it about five five years maybe, and like even I thought there was very few people I knew doing it. I done it as like a part time gig, like a mm-hmm. like a this will just be a weekend job. Was that when you were? Fireman was it? So I done I done like lifeguarding on the the weekends when I was in uni, and then to stop me and this is me being dead serious to stop me going out and drinking and taking a load of drugs on the weekend, I was like I'm gonna work Sunday morning. So I got a job in the local pool, and then also started coaching on a Sunday morning. So I put mm. all my clients on a Sunday morning so that like you cannot go out on the rep and then have like 10, 15 people to talk to and actually act professional. So it sort of hid me away from that. And it was a really good way to do it. But like, yeah. And then I sort of just fell into firefighting, like, to be honest. Like, mm. it was one of them things where I finished uni and I applied to the fire service. And I just was going through the process just to see could I get it. And then the, the funny thing is, I've actually never said this, but I was going to do a post on it in a while. Like, I didn't know if I was getting in the fire service. And my beach lifeguarding job had ended because it's only a summer gig. Like, I rolled out of uni and rolled into the beaches and was like, my dad was like, that's not going to last you more than three months. There's and a big fucking wasp in your head, man. No, there's not, is there? There's a bee. Where? There the way. Oh, it's not a bee, is it? A fly. It's a yellow looking fly, anyway. I like, acted very calmly stung. there, didn't I? Did, I'm proud yeah. of myself because usually I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> As the camera's the lights, on. Because <laughs> <laughs> usually I'm like, uh, And I came out of uni and went into the job and then. I actually, because I didn't know if I was getting the fire service or not, like, there's no, there was no word. Like, I signed on the dole and all. Like, like I was like, fuck, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, so it was one of the things where, and then, like, a week ended up being on the dole, which is metal. Like, I got that job and it started in January. And then I started the, right. I started more taking the coaching serious and it sort of just snowballed, mm. if you get me, because the results were quite mental. And then it's just like one of the things where it just kept happening. And I eventually it came to the stage where I was like, either do I, pull the business back and sit in the fire service or do I leave the fire service and sort of chase it and I sat down I was always like wrote it all out and I was like I'll I know exactly what way my life will go if I stay in the fire service right that's dead on I can see what the top and I was like I'm gonna roll the dice and see what happens and if shit hits the fan in 18 months fuck it I've, at least I've go I've rolled the dice because I'll always like it's that thing like I was saying to you like time like I could see myself working on the Lisbon Road fire station in Belfast for the next 30 years and there's nothing wrong with that and I would have loved it but I was also like but what if? And I would have been, like, I'm always the sort of person that'd be like, fuck it, roll the dice, do you know what I'm saying? But um, see, every time you say that, just like me homeless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, look, fuck, you have to roll the dice sometimes. No risk, it. no reward, like, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I know you mentioned there with, uh, with clients, you try and push push calories on them almost, not in a, like, a necessary way, but in a necessary way, yeah. Uh, You'll push it on them to try and get them up to a certain... Yeah, like, I'll be quite aggressive with even females. Like, I'll push calories up to 3,000, 3,500. And it's it's not because I'm like, I want you bigger and trying to feed them. It's like a case of your vein. Like, it's, it's one of the things... It's good to push people out of their comfort zones and focus. Like, how often do you hear of a lass going up to them calories? You never do. Mm. But then that's why a lot of them struggle to get lean because they're not eating as much. Whereas, like, I was on 5,000 calories, 5,300 for months. And whenever I died, I went down to three five there, like, and it literally was just flying off me. Mm. So, and I was going, I'm still stuffed. Do you know what I mean? Because I had had high for so long, my body was just dying to get it off. And that's where you end up in that yo-yo of like low, like you go from twelve hundred to two thousand and back to twelve hundred, and you're just going in circles for the next thirty years, and you're still not in shape. Yeah, and you're repeating. You know, it makes no sense, but let's continue to do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like nobody looks at and goes, "This is broke." It's like I always bring. I always use. I don't know why, but I always use like plumbing analogies because it always makes sense but like i'm always like so if your sink's broke you ring the plumber yeah but yet if you can't fix your body you still continue to be like i'll fix it with 1200 calorie deaths 100 no youtube, no YouTube, youtube workouts oh don't even talk about <laughs> that well i i can't even say anything i put up youtube workouts mine are good 
<laughs> they're not you're not just making someone jump around like after no it's a, it's a little bit more there, no there's now. weights i did do a press-up challenge there last week so i can't even say anything yeah, and i actually yeah, croaked yeah. at like 70 press-ups and I, i'm not lying there actually because there's like press-ups please i can do 60 kg dumbbells and like eight press-ups and i was like this is fun i was like i am quite heavy yeah. actually <laughs> <laughs> what way do you do? i'm 92 93 in round that like so i'm not too bad it was a lot like I'm glad I'm this weight now because I was watching Love Island like maybe like 10, 12 weeks ago and I remember it was like the first, it was like the first night it was on and I was sitting beside my mum on the couch and she was like, would you shut up? And I was like, I didn't say anything. And she was like, all I can hear is you breathing. You sound like you're jogging because I was going, <sighs> <laughs> but like I was just sitting there because it was so heavy. Like my blood pressure and all was so high and she was like, seriously. And like her and my sister and all were like, well, you actually leave the room, you're doing our heads in. Because <laughs> of, of how, like, like do, do you know, I know that sounds strange, but do you know the way, like I got, I must've went and got up and went to the toilet and came back and I was pure out of breath. Like I was wrecked, but I didn't, do you know the way you don't realize? Do you know the way, like if somebody comes out and they haven't done much, you can actually hear them slightly panting. Yeah. Without them, re like, <sighs> I think it probably sounds like a serial killer. <laughs> but uh, like that sort of thing. And it's just, uh, so I, I do push things quite aggressively but i'm always like that like i'm a bit of a pusher in all aspects of no, life. but you're smart like in the sense that you one of your values is time and using time wisely for them people who have been yo-yo dieting there they could be wasting years yo-yo dieting going up and down but instead you're pushing them onto them calories and then getting them to the end point that they want in a fast off yeah exactly right? like you don't grow like you'll always hear people say you don't grow in comfort zones but as well like like if you're not happy with your body like as much as people have said you'll know, be happy the way you are yes 100 percent but if you are actually trying to improve, actually fucking improve. Like, mm. That's like me going practice and kicking a ball for three years and doing it wrong completely the whole time. Not even kicking the right ball, kicking a fucking rugby one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It makes no sense. Like if you're going to kick the ball, at least kick the right one and give yourself a chance. Yeah. It's just that sort of thing where like, as you say, with time, it's just, I don't think people value it enough. Like it, in any aspect, it's like, but you know what? I had to learn that lesson as well. And the reason I always use the plumbing analogy is because I bought a house maybe like four years ago. It was the first one. And I was obviously like the sink busted in it. And I was like, I'll fix it. No sweat. And I went in. This is where this plumbing analogy thing always started because it always, it always sticks with me. And I went in and was like, I'll fix it. No sweat. How hard can it be? YouTubed it. No sink. Fix the sink. And it was like, a, it was the U bit and all. And no joke. You should have seen the floor of the house. <laughs> it was pure flooded. And I had to ring the plumber and was like, Paddy will you please come up here and fix this? And when he came up, he was like, no joke, it would have cost you 20 quid for me to fix this. And he was like, no, nah, it's going to be like at least a thousand pounds. Because the place was flooded. You know, like I had to get, I had to get the carpet and all fixed. And, but the thing is, instead of just paying somebody and valuing my time, mm. I thought I'll, I'll waste my time. And then it was wasting my own money. And I was like, this makes no sense. And mm. then now I just ring him and I save myself the hassle, which makes so much more sense. Do you know what I mean? I get the job done properly rather than me near full of the house i see a lot of people value money more than time yeah bingo which is uh, don't get me wrong money has its place like you can't do jesus i near broke that uh you can't you can't do a lot of things right money see these people are saying like money's not the key to happiness absolutely but at the same time if you're broke you're gonna end up working mm. for it anyway so you're gonna end up unhappy in a different job do you know what i mean like yeah. it it pays to actually have some sort of decent income like as much as people say it doesn't matter yes you can be happy would not, but it does also take a lot of stress off in our areas. 100%. And I, you know, so many coaches that don't charge what they're worth. 100%. Because they don't, I don't know whether it's a self esteem thing, but they don't think they're worth the money or. In any know. aspect, even like that plumber party, like for example, like I, he goes to me, he fixed the shower in my house like a while back. I was like 120 quid and he came in like a Friday night or something. And he was like 120 quid and I was like, take 150 because I was like, you actually came within like 20 months of me ringing you and you were there for like five hours. So like, <sighs> don't be charged me 20 quid just because I'm your, I was like, charge what the job's actually worth. And he's like, yeah. thank you so much. And all that. But he's afraid because people are like almost arguing back yeah, about yeah. the price. Whereas I think it's that sort of thing where like, especially if you my coach and I'm sort of like, and this sounds real shaky, but okay, so I'm like, I don't need you to come on. So like, if you're not happy with the price or anything, go fuck yourself. Like, I don't care. Like, it's literally not my problem. Like this, you don't walk into the shop and be like the 10 of Cokes, one pound 50 and start having a fucking argument with the boy in the shop. 100%. But yet some of you message me and go, well, that's a disgrace. And I'm like, this is actually cheaper than most people. Though. Like yeah. the, the people message me and go, you're ex person. I'm like, that's wrong. I don't even know who told you that. I'm not that dear. That's ridiculous. But yeah. if you pay for something, you'll value it more. It's like, if you pay, like when my mom paid for a new kitchen table the other day, and it was expensive for her. She was like, she put a plastic sheet over it that we've never had before in our house so nobody could scratch it because she's paid for it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if she bought it for 20 quid, she, she wouldn't care about it. Scratch the fuck out of it, don't yeah. care. And I think that's the same. Like I like I value my car, I value things that I actually pay. And it makes me take care of them more. Now, and that's the same like if with your body and your coach and all. It's like I paid a really good price for my coach. Like he's not cheap. 
but I actually stick to what he does then. Mm-hmm. I don't want to die. It's only if you want to go down the coaching rabbit hole or if you want to, people don't want to listen to that. <laughs> There's a mix and match, like, do you know what I mean? You can do, if, if they're not interested in the fitness stuff, they can dip in and out, they'll be all right. Yeah, zone in, zone out. Zone in, zone out. Uh, with, with the, with one thing I want to ask about, go in there, fitness you related, uh, any other things apart from the eight meals a day that you... That I do? No, that is maybe you could look at the downside of putting on the mask you're looking to put on. Oh, aging. Like, I look for, like I've looked like I've turned 35 overnight. Look. What do you do? I'm 26. I know oh, I don't I look you're it. older than me, hey? Yeah, it's, it's, do you know what I mean, lads? It's, <laughs> I just look well. Like, I'll show you a photo from 12 months ago and you'll be like, oh, we baby I've face. Seen it, yeah. do, you, do you know the one I'm talking about? Whereas just the weight and then going up and down, like, that's not healthy. Like, as much as people are like, health and fitness, what I'm doing is not healthy. Like, mm. I don't care what everybody says. Eating, like, I'm eating like 280 grams of protein a day. Like, that is not good for you. Like, as much as people will be like, health and I look all right. If I say so myself, but a case of like long term as well, like that does age you. That's reactive oxygen species. Do you know the amount of exercise you're doing? Like there's studies to show as well. Like if you exercise for more than two and a half hours a day, you're actually aging yourself more than if you were doing nothing. You know, and that's one thing people don't get about elite sport and yeah. people at high levels in any sport is like it's not healthy. That's why it dies off over time as well. Like you're not going to last forever. Like you can't. It it's it, you know, I mean, it's it's mad enough that. I wouldn't say there's anything like in particular. There's there's pros and cons. Do you know what I mean? Like to everything in life, there's it's trade off. Mm. It just we were saying working for money or like if you push too hard and you're bulking, you're gonna have to take the consequence of maybe a wee bit higher blood pressure, wee bit higher blood glucose, maybe you know per sex drive or something like that. Mm. All them sort of consequences. Like that's the same with dating too hard as well. Like you might look good, but then maybe you've had to sacrifice family meals. Maybe you've had to sacrifice doing extra cardio, mm. give up something you really love. But now you look good. So it's that trade-off is, is that worth it to you? And that's what I always say to people. Like whenever I get them lean, I'm always like, how lean do you want to go? Because the leaner you go, the more your life is probably going to suck. Yeah. And that's me being straight with you. Like if you, don't get me wrong, there's a nice balance. And if you've been really leaning for a long time, you know, you, you need to stop going out and having a little pints. Like there's a limit. But if you are in good shape, you've got just an outline of abs to go to shredded, it's going to take like no drinking, no meals out. It's going to take weighing every gram of food. It's going to take that restriction to an extent. And then that's fine with that as long as you're happy with what you're getting for what you're given. Because mm. people turn around and go, oh, but I haven't been to such and such. And I'm like, yeah, but you wanted this. And I'm like, to get this, you have to pay X. Do you know what I mean? And I think people don't really think about that. Whereas like, I think like to get to where I want to go, I need to give up most, I need to give up a good bit of nights out. Like I need to focus on you know, buying houses, focus on my business, focus on my physique. And I'm okay with that because I'm like, that's what I want. But if you're not happy with that, then you know you're going to make yourself unhappy. Mm. Does that make sense? You have to be willing to take the sacrifices to whatever it needs. Like I, no, I'm doing the jiu-jitsu competition now in less than three weeks. I know there's a chance that I could get a fucking arm broken or yeah. get put to sleep. Risk to reward. I'm willing to accept that. Yeah. If you're going in and not expect like, oh, it's not going to happen to me. And it will like, happen. I think, yeah, <laughs> 100%. If you actually think about something, it's like whenever I was going to fire calls, I always thought about like worst case scenario. And then touch, like, I'm glad nothing ever bad it did happen to me because I was always, whereas the if you're overconfident or something, that's when shit can start going a wee bit wrong, I think. Mm. Sometimes you see when you're rambling on podcasts, you always be like, does this make sense? Yeah. <laughs> was you know that what I mean? <laughs> it wasn't there. Yeah, it was like that. And then the last thing I was saying, I was like, does that make sense? If people are going to go, that makes zero sense. Because <laughs> I have you thinking back in my head and I'm like, I can't zone out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Yeah. Do you know the way, like, in a conversation, you'd be like, because sometimes I'll be talking to my mom and stuff, like, people are going to think I have no friends and uh, <laughs> Hi, be, yeah do you know what I mean and I'd be like does that make sense and she'd be like no not one bit but and then you'll reword it it does it's yeah. just you know you talk in your own sort of you, you, you're it's making sense up here but it's not necessarily <laughs> making sense here yeah, 100%. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> 100% yeah so it's not always a good thing though but uh, was there anything else you want to dive into fitness or no, like to be honest, I had some things that I wanted to to to, to chat about, but like I like I like the old random tangents. And one yeah. thing, one thing you mentioned earlier about that client of yours that um you give her, you told her there's two choices. Two oh, the relationship stuff. Relationship. How how funny is it that the stuff that you learn and spend so much time learning ends up being nearly the last thing that you end up talking to clients about oh yeah like history in school and stuff like or like geography know, or what like, are you talking oh, about like when you're learning like oh you mean calorie deficit sorry yeah, i went yeah, back to oh, jesus like, ease yeah you're going way i'm way going back. way back to like math in school <laughs> i know what you mean like the like the i always remember stuff like running downhill gives you shin splints and stuff in my pt exams and stuff and i was like 
that's nothing to do with it. Usually it's just basic stuff like people want to have a life and get in shape and not starving people. Joe, you know, like actually like giving a fuck going, right, well, this person's working seven hours a week. It's probably not smart to give them four hours of cardio. Like, mm. Joe, I, think, I know what you mean. It's actually very, everything is usually very simplistic if it's broke down. If somebody understands something really well, like I went to a course before for nutrition and the boy was like, I'm going to write down everything you ever need to know about nutrition on a post-it note. And he was like, are you with me if not? And he wrote it down. And the whole three hours was saying like, and it was, it was practically like, you know, how much protein to have? Like it was 2.2 grams, not 1.8 to 2.2 grams, 0.5 grams of fat per kilo, kilogram. And he was like, fill the rest with carbs. And he was like, and then roughly calorie range, Joe, eat for seven days, weigh yourself. And then you can increase calories, decrease. Like he made it so simple that you almost couldn't argue that he was wrong. Mm. And I was like, to be honest, if you coached everybody like that, it would work, but people love to overcomplicate things. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's uh, that's an idea when you know somebody doesn't know what they're talking about. Whenever somebody has to use big words, like I'm not a big word person, like the simpler it is, the more you understand it, the more somebody's actually going to believe you. Mm. Whereas, do you know what I mean? be able to take a complex idea and make it simple. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. That's the exact way everything should be though, because mm. that's where, and people are starting to tune in more. Now if people throw around big words, people go, oh, that person doesn't know what fucking bald he's like. He's trying to bluff me. And I think a lot of people on Instagram will know this as well. You'll see people, that, and you'll be like, he's actually, he must think I'm thick. <laughs> By saying stuff like this, you're like, he's actually, you can see con men, you can see, like, you need to remember, like, a lot of people are a lot smarter than you that are watching you mm. as well, do you know what I mean? Like, you don't actually realize that, because, like, some people will say me, uh, like, I'll say something, and then they'll write to me, and I'll go, oh, he's actually got a point, la. Sometimes mm. I'll go, ah, who the fuck's this boy, like, but at the same time, sometimes I'll go, oh, didn't think about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like, the, the whole thing's a bit mental, like, you don't use a whole lot, do you, like, would you say it's simple, but people overcomplicate it, yeah? 100%. Yeah, it is. Now, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't walk with straightforward, just like look, walking on people's physique as much, maybe as you would. Yeah, I'm just luck based mainly, to be honest. Yeah, so I would try and incorporate a little. I do a bit of walk with uh, athletes as well, so we walking on performance. Yes, as well. But I'd always be trying to incorporate, you know, keeping health a big part of it. Like no matter what we're doing, we're gonna do it with health, yeah. kind of in the background. That's and a good. That's a good thing to have, though. I I don't know. I see. I walked in an osteopath clinic for a while, so I was helping people come back from injuries kind of the branch in between actual rehab, you know, like a physio or an osteopath and getting back yeah. to full on training. So that's always kind of ingrained in my mind a wee bit. So I always yeah. keep joint health is always like a big thing. So whenever I heard this man doesn't use any free weights, he's only machines. It's like, how's his joints? Yeah. Well, see, I think that, <laughs> see, then I would just be like my, like, I don't get any issues with like, I know what you mean. Cause stability, you're not training, but the problem is I don't go from like machine to free weights. Yeah. I'm just machine based and I'm angle based and I'm all about like it would bore you would actually go <laughs> yeah. but I'm all about like angles moment arms force angles and I'm like what exercise is going to give me the most bang from buck yes mm -hmm. I could do chest press I could do a barbell press and I could do a dumbbell fly or I could do a cable press and I'll get everything in one movement and then I can do more sets I'm just such a dweeb for growth like because because I spent so long trying to get muscle now that I've actually got some, I'm like, oh, how do I get more? Do you know what I'm like? Keep going. Do you know what I mean? Like, cause, yeah, because for for so long, I was always like, even like way back whenever I was going out and I was 18, like, like, like I would have pinned my sleeves because they were like, I would have been like, do you want them bigger? And I'd be like, pin them, that'll look better. Like, like seriously, like, like what the fuck? But the thing <laughs> is, I would have thought my arms were decent size back then, but because I've got more muscle now, I'm always like, I want more. And I think that's what, I think that's what everything in life, like, do you know, mm -hmm. once you, it's like that, like I know fellas like that are literally earning like 100 grand, 200 grand. Like I know boys that are driving Ferraris now and like they want more. Like as mm. soon as they get it, they want more. Like that wear, that brand new wears off. It's like the, whenever I got that truck, like first couple of times, yeah, great. And don't get me wrong, I still do love it, but it's not the same as whenever you first get in it. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, what's next? What's next? Do you know? And then you're like, why do I, why is there gotta be in it? It's such a, it's so weird the way you think sometimes, isn't it? Like whenever you analyze it now, I'm like, oh, fuck, I sound like a dickhead. <laughs> yeah. I know. Straight, you, you tell it straight, boy. Yeah, tell it straight. It's because, like, I think as well, like, a lot of people are afraid to come on and be like, that I'm doing this and it doesn't make sense, or like, mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing as you. It's like preaching about money and then me spending a load of money on a car. Like, everybody does that, so do I, but it's like learning as you go and not making every decision per mm -hmm. just some or well, majority for me, probably. But learn as you go, I think, is one of them things where because there's so many people that act like they're always doing the right thing. Or they've never made a mistake. Whereas, like, I'll openly, oh, I always turn around. See, whenever a client like goes, oh, the weekend was really heavy, and it rolls around, and I know they're twenty one, and they're, and I'd be like, don't worry. If there's a different, there's a clear difference between when you're hungover and you're on a fucking come down, son. Like, mm. I've been there. 
let's maybe dial this back and let's have an open honest chat. And the first thing whenever I turn around and go like, I've been that person that's lost, taking drugs, don't know where they're at. The, the first thing they go is, and now you're you're actually doing quite well. And I'm like, yes, but I still don't have a ballies all the time. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I've just winging figured, it. yeah, figured, <laughs> oh, fucking everything's winging it. Yeah. Like, like sure, like I, like I was saying, like I was meeting a fella last night because I'm trying to sort out in our house. And like, whenever I start getting in the house, it's like, I had no clue, like no clue. I was like, I'll just, I'll try and buy one here and see how this goes. But you're not waiting, wait until you know everything about it before you go at it. You no way. It's a perfect moment. No way. Like uh, speed is everything with me. Like as you mm. said, time. Like I got it. Like I've got my first house like three, four years ago, and now I've, I have a good whack now. But the thing is, I was like, I'll learn as I go. That's a lot better than waiting for the perfect time. And then you 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 pick up a lot more whenever you're doing something. It's like you like if you were gonna go to the gym, you're gonna learn a lot more in the gym than at home watching YouTube videos. Hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? You learn by doing. It's like you can't learn to be. I was gonna say a plumber by fucking sitting in the house, but like you can't learn to be. A, <laughs> can't learn to be a joiner. You can't learn to be a firefighter in a book. No. There's only so much. So, like, I was like, I'm just gonna dive in here, and if it goes tits up, it's a lesson I'll learn. 100%. And don't get me wrong, there's wee things that went wrong, but at the same time, I've learned a lot quicker. And all of a sudden, people on my Instagram are asking me questions about mortgages, and all. I'm like, I'm not a fucking mortgage advisor. Look. I'm like, I like, I'm just winging this as a go. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm doing quite well, but like, I don't know everything. Mm. So, whenever I tell you something, it's like, this is what I think. Mm. Doesn't mean it's right. This is just my opinion. Look. It's right for you, man. Yeah, it's what I would do. Doesn't yeah. mean that it's necessarily correct. Like, do, do you like do you know the saying? Your mom would say, "If he stuck his hand in the fire, would you?" Yeah. Well, I, like I would stick my hand in the fire, so you maybe should, maybe should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> but it, like so many things are individual. People don't get, and even like in terms of training and stuff like that and nutrition, it is an individual. Like, but like even decisions and like, right, how the fuck am I going to go about setting up a business? depends on the person social media too though. like it's like that whenever you see people like try and act like different people or like like i just try and do me on everything though. like just be myself and roll it and i'm quite go 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 and i'll make that whereas some people might be slower and it might be smarter and there might be less mistakes mm. but i'm like i'm just all about trying to get it done and move forward but that's who i am like that's mm. why on instagram like i'll always be like right let's go let's do this and i'm very very like loud out there like that's just the way i've always been mm. And but yet at the same time, like I would still say I'm an introvert. It's just the way I am as a personality in terms of like doing things. I'll just go, go, go. Mm. It's yeah, I don't know. As you said, it's like individual. You sort of have to tailor everything to that. Like hundred percent. That's why one piece of advice will never work for every, and that's why it's advice. That's why you shouldn't be living your life based off quotes you see on Instagram. No fuck, <laughs> especially not me. Holy fuck. Oh. Like, what I be doing? I be like people be like, oh, talking about cold water and all. I'm like, but I don't do it for recovery and all. I do it because it actually calms me down because like. My mind be going a hundred miles an hour or something, you yeah. know. I know I do like the cold water's good. Cold water's good. I'm trying to stop being a little bitch and get myself out there more often. I'm not a fan of the old cold water. In terms of I'm just not used to it. That's what it is. You need to go with somebody who's 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 going with you. I find going with somebody's easier because like you aren't both gonna go somewhere to where there's cold water, maybe a ten minute drive, and then none of these get in. Mm -hmm. And if, if I got in, you'd get in. Do you know what I mean? Or vice versa. You, you do you know what I mean? You wouldn't let so it's that sort of like not peer rest. Like if you went bungee jumping and two of you went. And when somebody jumped, you have to go. Like you wouldn't be like, nah, because you're gonna get you're gonna get deaf. You're gonna get slagged for like at least a year. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah. Like, a little bit of social pressure can be good sometimes. Yeah, good and bad. Like it's one of them things where it's like hit and miss. Depends on what you're pushing people towards. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. It's do you know what? Social media is such a mad thing though as well. Like because that's where your business of mine is really from. Mm. And it's such a like I'm the first person to always turn around and people like get off your phone, stop scrolling. Yet if people didn't scroll. I wouldn't have a business. It's, it's I literally sent out a newsletter earlier today about something like that, and I was like, "But before you call me a hypocrite, most of my business, all of my business is from uh, social, social media, media yeah. in terms of online. I wouldn't have a podcast without social media. Yeah, hundred percent. I wouldn't get to chat to fucking mad bastards from Newry like yourself. <sighs> Fuck, I don't know. If it's, I don't know if it's a mad. I'm a wing nut. That's where the height of it. But I think no, it's, I think even that's like that advice thing, like as well, like. It's like when people are watching this, you're only looking one thing. Like you're looking one wee bit of value mm. and that can help. Like even if it was the relationship thing or if it was something you say, it, you're just like, it's whenever I'm reading a book, like you'll always notice, you, you don't remember the whole book, but you'll remember one or two wee things. Mm. Like the only book I ever read where I took away everything was, and I always recommend it, is John Wooden. It's called Observations On and Off the Court. It's about like a basketball coach that's mm. like 85. And he practically talks about like things you should do with your life that'll actually, whenever you're like, it's practically him writing it as he's dying, I think. Like he's like 90 and he practically was like, these things actually matter. Whenever you're 90 and you look back and go, thank fuck I done them. And he'll go, these things really don't matter. Don't spend time in them. I wish I didn't. And it'll be stuff like, he'll be talking about like, 
keeping people happy that don't really matter but it'll be like you know make sure you're at the dinner table so stuff that you will look back and go do you know what i'm actually glad i focused on them mm. and like his book's real short and his book's real short and like it's one of them things that you just it clicks points with you because whereas i know what you mean like you're looking for one or two golden nuggets because that's why people are watching this they'll see me or you and they'll be like I'm looking one wee thing that that person can give me. Mm. And that's why, like, whenever I went to the course with Dean Martini or whoever I go to, I'm always like, I'm looking one thing. It's even if you move to a different coach, you're not looking to revolutionize the wheel. You're looking one thing. Because if you can get one thing from 10 people, you've 10 new things. But exactly, do you, yeah. do you know what I mean, lad? You but if you them. got them all at once, you wouldn't take on half Fuck all. Yeah. Deadly. No, 100%. Like, it's like trying to learn 10 new skills at once. It's not, you have to take it and digest it. Like, I think that's the problem with switching off too. Like, like like whatever I was getting mad with, like the person always said he's not a light switch, don't switch off. Like, and I was like, I do actually get that. Like, because yeah. you need to absorb and then move, absorb the move. Whereas if you're only taking it in when you want, that's the issue. Whereas like I think you can analyze even things that people say and go, that was worth value. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, getcha. Gonna branch off into the last few. Just Quiet. looking up the clock, Isaac. Yeah, dive in. We'll dive in. Right. I know you. You would be, let's say, from a bodybuilding sort of about background and how yeah. you train how you approach things what's your opinion on cheat meals or that oh, whole term uh, i'm sending you down a rabbit hole here am i it just depends like it really depends on the person like if you're dating like do you mean if you're dating mm. no like no nah, like you're dating like it shouldn't be like it's different if i turn around you and you've dad and you've lost too much weight in one week and i turn around you and you go you need a refeed or you need a meal off to bring your calories up but i mean like if you dad all week and you have a meal off on a Sunday, no, that's just breaking that. Like, I don't give a fuck what I'd be saying. Like, that's just me going. Like, as much as you get, you're on 1,800 calories all week and then on a Sunday you have 3,500 and it's it's like, just have 2,200 all week. Yeah. And don't break that because you're getting better quality food. Now, there is people that will argue it's mentally better and stuff like that and that's completely fine. But if I'm dad and I don't break that, like, that's just plain and simple. I don't care. Like, but I have a really, I wouldn't say per food relationship, but I don't get enjoyment from food at all. No. Like, no, zero. Because I've had so much. Mm. And so, like, like, Joe, my coach, went from, uh, like, last, not this time of dad, last time we went from 5,400 calories to 850 for three weeks. Right? Straight down to 850. And it didn't affect me at all. I had no sweat. Like, it was sweet. I could have run that for months. Like, no issue at all. Because it's, for me, it's just not a, a thing that I'm like, oh, food gives me real salad. It's just something you have to do. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like, I appreciate a good meal out. But I, if we went out for dinner... I appreciate what the situation is. Do you know a bit of crack and more than what the fuck's on the plate? Mm. I know maybe that's just real weird, but that's yeah. probably why I struggle to actually comprehend and be like a cheap. Like I would still have a takeaway and stuff, but I'm not like, oh, I need this. Mm. Whereas I think you get that whenever you've been dadded for too long or you've circled and you haven't been strict during your dating phase. So it's prolonged and you need that. Like if you ask me, you can have a cheap meal every week and die for 12 weeks or you can die for five strict. I would just die for five strict. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's sort of the approach I take. What do you What do you take? I I personally don't like the label of a cheap yeah meal. a meal. Like I like how you said a meal off or a, a meal off. My coach calls it. Yeah, I like those phrases just because I think language can be important a lot. Of yeah, hundred percent. Cheap meal means get everything down your gob you can possibly get. You greedy gobbler. Hundred percent. Does the whole uh, like but, cheap meal get? Did you ever see the rocks? Yeah, and they're like fifteen cookies. Like, like nobody needs fifteen cookies. Like, no, not a hope. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when my coach writes cheap meal, like he just writes meal off and he writes, don't take the piss. Yeah. But then, Joe, you know, like I know what you mean. I think language is the really important thing as well. Because if you are saying cheat, you're automatically assuming that you're, you know, you're doing something you maybe shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. For some people, that won't make any difference, but for some people, it will. And the thing is, yeah, you just make it consistent. Like, is it, there's nothing wrong with meal off as long as you keep it consistent. It's in your dad. And if it makes you stick to the dad easier, like mm. if you notice that you take the meal off out, and then you're breaking that twice a week. That makes fuck all sense. Keep the meal off in. 100%. But for every individual, that's what you mean about the individual. Like the individualizing makes difference because for me, that wouldn't work. Whereas I would rather dad hard. But if somebody's breaking that and you're, you're dating them harder, that makes no sense. Mm. So I think it's it's trying to find that balance. Like I know fellas, like I've had a fellow on with me and he, like I know him inside out and he would eat a thousand calories all week if he could have a Sunday night off and eat whatever he wants. But I'm like, right, there's a middle ground. Do you know, that's where I'm trying to, and you, you tailor it around. Whereas I know over people, if I give them an inch, they'll fucking take a mile. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that would be, it's not like a yes or no. It's mm -hmm. like, a, it depends. They're the worst answers, aren't they? Like, the idea, and you're supposed to be straight talking, fucker. <laughs> I know, look, you have to give a bit of context as I well. would say no, that's me. Yeah. If I had to say something, I'd be like, no, man, the fuck up and dad. Yeah. 
Simple. 100%. 100% <laughs> if you're dying. They're dating. straight talking, lad. Yeah. Um, what was the other things? Come on. The other thing, right? Hit me with the juice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you were in the bank in Yuri? The ba- oh, f- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was actually in it maybe like, apart from maybe like 12, 13 weeks ago, when I, I didn't drink, I was sober. Like, I literally popped in with boys when I came home from somewhere. I'd say apart from that, like, four years five years yeah i'm never out mate like i'm literally like a hermit i'm literally in my si- i'm in my sister's bedroom that's now turned into my office Sad. and it's just me at desk and laptop and i'm just like this all day all night just typing do you know on the computer like that's literally what i'm like like even on saturdays and stuff like i'll just be honest that's that's the because people be like oh, i must have a good no like i'm sitting there working like, that's yeah, usually man, me you like. get it done you have to get it done that's a mad question like. yeah no no <laughs> i was like no i'm gonna ask some stuff about nuri because like I used to I used to work in the canal court. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would have been uh, known a lot of boys from Newry and like I was oh going to the bank, going to the bank. I I went to the bank once. Nah, it's a bit shit now. Look, like, yeah. it's not really. I know it's like the dock. Uh, we would be like Ridley's is the nightclub there. Well, Ridley's yeah. was the nightclub back in the day, uh, and we'd be like, no, I wouldn't go there if you paid me. Yeah, it's it's one of the things as well. I think like because I've been I've been going away a good bit as well. I almost value like when I go away having a bit more freedom. So I'm like, why would I go out here whenever I can go out there? Or like, mm. it's like I'd rather save up for one good night somewhere wherever I want. Mm. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a bank, but it's one of them things where it's local. I've been there a thousand times. Give me something different. You know everybody there. Yeah, no, I can't stand that either. Like that does my Joe as well, where you're shaking a million people's hands and nobody actually really likes you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, though? You like, said uh, well to about 200 people. Well, like, 200 people. I'm like, see, if I saw you in the street, you would spit in me. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you're like, Joe, I don't know what sounds all, but you're doing it. And as much as people will hate that, like, that does happen. And I, especially even now, like, you, you know it yourself. You're shaking people's hand and maybe having a small conversation, but then people actually don't even really give a fuck about you. They're just shaking your hand because they sort of know who you are. Yeah. And then you're trying to make sm- small talk is not what I'm about. Like, no. I'm literally like, I will, if somebody stands, shakes my hand, stand there, I'll literally go, and that's it. It's just silence. Do you know what I mean? And I'm sort of like, right, well, I'm aware. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm not going to go, oh, how's you? How's the dog? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, 100%. Fuck off. Like, that's, <laughs> that's complete shite. You mentioned you, you go for a dip quite regularly. Is there anything else you do to look after the old head? Yeah, I would journal and stuff as well. Like, uh, do you know what? Like, see, for me, a lot of mine's venting. Like, uh, even just like, I'll take a walk by myself. Like, I find, like, people will find things are very different. Like, but. I find that I decompress or I get a lot of mental space by myself. Like I'm a very much like a, like some people hate being by themselves. Mm. I'm the exact opposite. I love keeping to myself. Like, like I'm fucking, I love a movie by myself. Like I would go to the cinema by myself. I'm going to ask you about your favorite film after this. Oh, no, bad. I'm just getting, I'm planting the seeds so you have time to think and create that I'm, answer. I'm nervous now. That's even worse. <laughs> but, uh, blue movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's I've lost track now. Oh, We're lost. back to porn. <laughs> <laughs> we fucked it. Uh, what are we talking about? You're talking about things to look after now. Oh yeah, know. like walks. But yeah, I keep everything to myself. Like whereas Julie, you know sometimes when you vent to somebody, it works. Mm. I'm not really like that. Like I sort of need time to myself. Like if I have an argument with somebody or I need me time works better. Whereas when I'm trying to please other people or me, I get more stressed. So like I would be like a man to go watch a movie in the cinema by myself even or just take time right or go to the gym or go for a dip. But that usually for me, like I call them anchoring points. I don't want to rant on, we'll be here all night, but it's one of the things where like I always have, even even one of the things I've always done is I always take my shoes off, sit outside the front of my house, write my phone with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and I'll just sit there with, and just nothing else and, until I'm actually like mellowed. If something was stressing me, do you know what I mean? Like you get in a stupid argument with somebody mm. and you're fucking amped up. I'll just go a cup of tea and sit outside until I calm down. And then like something stupid will happen. Like the, a cat will walk by or you'll see kids. For, and then you just sort of slowly mellow out. Mm. That works really. And I call that like an anchoring point. I got that, I forget who I got that off, but it's sort of like, you know, you're set and ship until you're calm. Mm. Cause you're no use to anybody when you're all fucking sprung up. Not a bit. So yeah, that would, what would you do? BJJ? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say that's, I wouldn't like, if I'm not feeling fucking great, I wouldn't be like, right. I'm going to go do BJJ. Probably be something like journaling. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. See, the thing is too, like there's this real thing as well. Like it's like, it, 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 I know people say that it's okay to not be okay, but it's one of them things where like you will feel like shit sometimes. Everybody mm. does. Like I don't wake up and go, fuck, I'm the man every day. I wake up and sometimes be like, I look like I don't even lift. It takes about two hours to get into that stage. where you're Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 15 minutes or so after <laughs> standing in the mirror and tense and all and I go, but uh, it's one of them things where 
I think you even get ruts like that. Like I've had months. Like I remember last Christmas especially. Like I was in a really bit of a, like a pickle. Training sucked. Food sucked. Like I just didn't feel like myself. And like I didn't tell anybody. And it wasn't like I was depressed. I was just not in a great form. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It didn't mean I need medication and everything was wrong. It just I was in a rut. And the thing is though, you just rode for that. You'll get out of it. Yeah, you're, you're not going to stay in that for 40 years. Like, mm. Unless you start a get caught and that for me i think is a case of like it's okay to feel like shit sometimes because you're gonna you're never gonna feel great all the time no. if you can't have do you, do you know what's funny as fuck i always use this quote you just get a laugh for this it's like if you ever listen to pitbull talk about like him is rise to fame it's hilarious and he's like you can't have a low about a high you can't have a valley about a mountain and i'm always like you really can't though like you can't actually feel good until you've actually felt like shit 100%. otherwise everything would be monotone do you know like mm. if you've been in the pits whenever you're actually up high, you feel fucking great. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you sort of need that low for that high. And it's funny because every time I, I quote that to clients and they're like, you're actually quoting Mr. Worldwide to me. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Pitbull. But it, it's, do you know the thing is, the funnier something is like that, yeah. the more it sticks with you. It's like, I always give clients like cues that are like sort of slightly dirty. I'm like, Joe, you know, when you're doing a lion leg curl, I'm always like, hump the pad because mm. your arse will stick in it. And you'll not forget that though. Whereas mm. if I told you, it, like try and keep your hips glued, you're like, what? Because no, I'm like, hump the fucker. With cat, you know, cat cow, the stretch. Yes. I'm like, hump your face. Try and skull fuck yourself. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot dirty. <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's that's the X-ray doing what, the skull fuck. What's your favorite movie then? Give me that. This is this oh, is. Oh right, I I see. I put you in the spot. Put me in the spot. Favorite <laughs> film, right? Go, the Godfather is up there, but it's not number one. And I know it's a fucking very over cho chosen movie. It's plus the second and the third one's slow as fuck, isn't that? The like, first one I, I yeah, the pick. first one's good. The other two is actually like you're falling asleep watching them. Mm. I like the second one, but there's only bits of it. Robert the Robert De Niro. Unreal. But do you know whenever they make a saga movie though, it actually can and it's shit. You're like, I don't even want to watch the first because the, they actually fuck this. Yeah. Like, do you know they actually were supposed to make a second E. T. movie? Do you yeah. know that? And the person who wrote the script actually started writing it, it started turning like hard. So there just goes that's not the way that we wanted to go and they cut it and that's actually smart because you would always remember remember they made that shit second movie of it whereas you don't because they, they cut it when it was it's like your time was there like. mm, and the amount of like I, you mentioned now when we were break that you're a fan of Marvel right oh I'm as like I see whenever you like I'm, I'm as geeky with it as it comes like I'll know the next 20 movies coming out I'll know like do you know like the forms and stuff? I'll be on there reading them and all. Like, well, and you, what about the fact that there's so many films of the same series? Is that not getting you know you're on about sequels and? What do you mean? Like, as in like, does them doing loads of sequels and like new variations? You know, does no, I, I no, I like that. Like, as I long like as they're good as well. movies, I'm happy. But it's if it's a shite movie, I'm like, oh, why did you just do this? Like, it's like a money rack. Whereas if you keep rolling with something, if something's good, you keep rolling it, baby. I'm happy. Unrepentant. If someone's turning into dog shit, though, it's just cut it, it's got it dead as it is. Like, fuck that. Like, I ain't watching it. Like, but no, I'm a big, big dork for it. Like, I am. Like, I'll just be straight as fuck with it. Like, favorite Marvel film then? Oh, um, Thor Ragnarok was probably the best. It's fucking class, isn't it? It's a It's because it's got comedy in it too. Like, like, as much as that sounds dweeby, I don't know how we rolled on this, but it's one of them ones where it's actually because the, this. The, not that I was getting a bit boring as well. You know what's going to happen in Avengers and all, whereas like yeah. Thor Ragnarok was completely like weird as fuck, but it, it was funny. That boy, boy, that boy, yeah. I know you're you know talking about. The director <laughs> plays the, the rock creature. Yeah. Korg or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the revolution, eh? Yeah, that boy, <laughs> and it's quality. Like, that's, the, that's probably the best part in the movie, yeah. I would say Marvel, see in terms of like actual movies, like it's really, really tricky to call. Like, would you say The Godfather is yours? I don't know, no, I've, you're like me. You're sweating over this question. You're like, people are gonna judge my life on this. Yeah, no, it's like when I was, <laughs> I watched it when I was about twelve, and since then it's been like at the top three. So it's like what's it's, the other two then? That changes a lot. That changes a lot. Very indecisive man. Uh, I like the the Green Book is a fucking great film. Is it the Green Book? Yeah. Is that the one with the the boy that plays piano? No. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's man, recent. Ar Aragon. Yeah, that that's very good. Top mine. Just. Comes Viggo, to you all the time. Viggo Mortensen is fucking class in it. Yeah. The fact that he was Aragorn in Lord of the Rings and that same fella now that that. baffles me. That's interesting. See, when people ask me for a good movie to watch, I never, I always say this, even though it's not my favorite. Law Biden said this on the first time you watched it, I think blew, blew my mind. I'm like, do you know, I was like, oh, this is actually a really good plot. But like, I've never watched it again. So it wouldn't be my favorite. But it always, like, if somebody's never seen that, I'm always like, that's a good movie to watch. Mm. See, whenever it comes down to like movies that like are. My, I, oh, I always sort of lean to like words like Transformers 1 and stuff like do you know like it's not a classic it's not like a cult classic do you know like people will be like Shawshank Redemption I'm actually spitting like that I actually, <laughs> actually full on caught my leg so 
that's rank. Uh, so I would say something like that there, but like it'd be more towards like the Marvels and stuff like as much as like because it wouldn't relapse things. But if yeah. I had to pick one, it would probably be like Transformers one because the la- first it was like one of the first movies the same. It was like this is on this is nuts. See you know with Megan Fox. I think I saw yes. it with my dad too so like it's a real good memory in the cinema my dad uh, yeah, probably yeah. sitting there going holy fuck look at Megan Fox <laughs> <laughs> and me sitting there like probably like 13 when my first pony you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so like it, 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 do, you, do you know what I mean though like it's it's what it, <laughs> it's yes. it's one of them things where I always just remember going with my dad to see it and it just being a good an unreal film so it's probably as well like the what it remembers, do you know what I mean? Memories, yeah. Yeah, as well. as because apart from that, otherwise I'm just going to start going like in a million directions. No, so no, we'll, no. We'll go with we'll that. We'll roll with that. That's, uh, that's all right. Favorite book or most influential book? I, I like John Wooden. The book that I first read that really got me towards like, and I'm going to be honest, like actually doing well for myself was Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Have you ever read it? No. it practically, like it's, it, did you ever read The Secret, right? Yeah. The Secret's a little wank. Mm. Napoleon Hill is like the secret, except... It actually tells you you need to fucking work hard, son. Mm. So like, uh, it's this boy, and he practically interviews like I think it's from like 1908 or something. It's from like way way back, and he interviews the like a hundred richest people in America, and like starts filing down like what they've done or like sorry sorry he interviews the most hundred successful people he knows. And, like there's even stuff about people who like invented the light bulbs and stuff, and like they've all got these things where like it, it, it the over overland thing is it came to a crossroads all of them where you can either double down and go all in or you can back out and everybody who doubles down eventually keep doubling down it'll work for you mm. like it's it, and it, it just it's something like that always stuck to me because i was always like whenever i was going to fitness and i was training i was always like i wasn't getting the result of one i was like if i double down it will eventually come so like it's just a matter of keep leaning keep leaning with everything even with like the way my coaching business was like it sucked even with the way the houses was, it wasn't great at the start. The more I keep leaning into something, the longer you give it, and the more you give. Like even Joe and shit hits the van. Don't be like, oh fuck, it's time for like I will lean in more. Mm. And then I always notice it pays off. Do you know when one thing pays off? Like I had abs every day for a year. Like I mean every day, like a thousand crunches. And eventually, it wasn't like day three hundred. It was like eventually after like six, seven months, they actually came. And I was like, and then you sort of build that. Like if I keep leaning into things, it'll work. It's like the coaching was terrible for ages. Like at the start, like I was, I was taking on people for free and turning around to people being like, I'll pay you for to come on board. And then eventually it's just, I kept leaning into it. And it, whenever you do something for long enough, you get good at it. Mm. Uh, that for me, what would you say? What's yours? Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. It's a weird book. It's not one of them ones that everybody will love, but I fucking hate the secret. And it's just, it's just a good book. Like it's, it's interesting if you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, in terms of book, I, I'm going to pick two. I'm going to pick two. Now, what Most if, indecisive man ever. I, Favorite book, give me two. I can't. All right, fuck you then. I'll, get, I'll go one, home. One, please. <laughs> one, please. Ask for one. <laughs> oh, you dick. That can be the cutscene of that. Uh, it's definitely an overread book, and it's probably said a lot. Sapiens. Did you ever read it? I've actually read half of it and put it down. <laughs> See, I'm a history geek. Oh, are you? Yeah, I love history. I bought the Audible, and I remember buying the Audible, enjoying like a bit, and I was like, I'll buy this book and read it bought it and was like oh i can't read this it is good it's really it's interesting but fuck it is long yeah like talk me that's a matter of book to pick mad i read it twice in the last two years I don't there's know a why. second one too isn't there for him there's three there's you read all three or no, just no i just so like just, the, just keep reweeding <laughs> well, reweeding i can't wait, speak oh, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> like jonathan was uh, <laughs> the reason why i don't like the other ones the second one's about future and artificial intelligence and i'm like it hasn't really, happened. Yeah, it's not hasn't happened, so it's, it doesn't really bother me. And then there's other one, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, I think it's his. Interesting. But I might go and get that That'll one. That'll be all right, though. I have Is so it, many books on the list, though. That I'm that's like, good value, though. That's a good question, because like, I've never got asked that, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And that, that usually does actually decide where you go. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that was a self-development book I, re- I read first, and that actually did really steer me. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm going to steal that from ours. Hey. <laughs> Mickey, Mickey's probably never read a book, to be fair. Like. <laughs> and, I, and hopefully you can cut that for me and I can use that for him. See, I don't usually ask that question unless somebody's mentioned a book beforehand. Oh, or do you? Or reading. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people don't. Whenever you ask, I was like, fuck, do I even... I haven't read in ages now. Like, yeah, yeah. That's why I wouldn't want to throw in someone that doesn't read. And they're like, I don't read. <laughs> Conversation <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's funnier, though. I would. <laughs> right. Uh, last question then. The cheesiest quote that you used to actually... Uh, kind of believe in or 
Go, no, no, I use it all the time. Like it's printed on my the back of my thing. It's from like when I've been like twelve. It's it's go the distance. It's a Hercules quote. Like you remember yeah. doing the tune? Oh. the tune. <laughs> you the the Hercules. Do you the tune? Do you the tune? Go the distance. Yeah, that there. Like Michael <laughs> Bolton. Because every time I, I when I was younger, I used to watch it all the time. Plus, he's pure buff and massive. Yeah, I sound, I sound like a fancy him, but it's one of them <laughs> things where I always stick it, and it always reminds me just to go, keep going, keep pushing, double down. And it's literally, it's printed out, like, typed out. It's like the, per see if I sent you a picture, you'd be like, he seriously has that there. And it's stuck with blue tack from about seven years ago. But it just, I stuck it up there as the first thing I done whenever I went in that room. Mm. That's the one I, I don't use whenever people, I just always think, go the distance. Just, it, you don't hear it all the time too. I use that and I always use focus. I always say the word, I use focus as a cue. If I'm struggling to focus on something, like in the gym or if I'm doing a set or something, I'll always say, focus is like the word I've retrained myself. When I say it, a lot and i'll just i'll keep saying it mm. till i'm either angry or focused on it so like if i'm doing a set if you watch me in the gym and you'll see my mouth i'm not singing like i'll always say focus 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 and i'll keep saying it till i'm actually fucking angry or until i'm actually focused on what i'm doing it's weird as fuck and uh, people probably think i'm a lunatic but hey what and what's yours then give us this going and not what? two i don't want two <laughs> quotes i want one please where do you think you can or you think you can't you're probably right. right. Yes. Yeah, that one I remember from school, man. That is good, though. I like yeah. that as well. Like, Because that is, that's about self-belief. That's a good one. That's a yeah. lot better than mine. <laughs> no, no, I like yours. Hercules is probably my favorite <laughs> Disney film. Yeah, do you know quality? <laughs> Class. Well, this is some fucking episode. This is about four hours long. I apologize. Four hours. It's all good. The boys are still here. He said he was going home about half an hour ago. Must have been good. Fair play. Yeah, well, at least you've enjoyed it then. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust you you just gotta steal equipment yeah you're right yeah yep. <laughs> well thanks for listening or watching whoever the fuck is here watching or listening go follow this fella listen to his own podcast and subscribe and all that guys thank you yes <laughs>